مولايا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ولبيته من التباس النتائج معين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى إنما يعمر مساجد الله من آمن من الله واليوم الآخر وقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة ولم يخشى إلا الله فأسى أولئك أن يكونوا من المهتدين صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم والآقبة للمتقين ونحن على ذلك لا من شاهدين وشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله Allah Azza wa Jalla Shana who have given us this beautiful Jumat al-Mubarak in the month of Safar, which is the second Islamic calendar month to come together in this beautiful masjid, the house of Allah. And today's topic is about Salah in the masjid and taking care of the masajid. Indeed, in this ayah, the one I recited from Surah At-Tawbah, which is ninth chapter of the Quran, the verse number 18, Allah says the masajid of Allah shall be visited and maintained by such as believe in Allah and the last day. Establish regular salah, prayers, and practice regular charity and fear none at all except Allah. It is they who are expected to be on the true guidance. With this, we have a direct command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should come to masjid. And the sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is that come to masjid five times a day. Compared to other adhiyan, the other faiths and the belief system, some visit once a day, some visit once a week, and some visit once a year, or whenever they feel like. But for a Muslim, it is a direct command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah at tawbah and this is command should be believed and practiced according to the sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. As we know that some of the history of Sahaba as narrated in the books of Hadith and the seerah of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, that they were sick and they were blind and they were handicapped and even himself Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his very last day of his life. When Ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu anhu, the poet of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam's masjid and his rule. He was a poet who used to recite poetry in the honor of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. He was a blind man. He could not see and walk. And as he got older, he was not able to walk on his own feet to the masjid and he was living little distance from the masjid, Masjid al Nabawi. So he asked permission, Ya Rasulullah, I am not able to come to the masjid all the time. Can I perform salah in my home? Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam did not give him an excuse on it and he said two people assigned to carry him on his, on his on the arms on each shoulder and bring him into the masjid to perform salah with the jama'ah. So congregational salah is a fard. The most absolute salah which is absolutely required not to be missed is the Juma salah. Which is we have a chapter in the Quran about Surah Juma. So that is must, that can never be missed. But regular salah should be performed with the Juma. And according to the hadith of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, when a person make a wudu from home, and walk to the masjid. On each step he takes towards the masjid for the salah, he get ajr equal to one hajj nafu maqbul. People have spent thousands of dollars, and we know many of us are sitting here, including myself, we have spent thousands of dollars to go to the haram and perform the nafil hajj and nafil umrah, which are not guaranteed to be accepted or maqbul. They were not guaranteed. There's no guarantee. But this one is a guaranteed maqbul hajj. Aj of it. Similarly, if a person looks at his father's face in the morning with a smile, 
get a Hajj, Maqbul reward for him. And the Sahabi asked, Ya Rasulullah, if I look at more than one time, the Nabi Sallallahu did not say that after one smile to the Father, next is not rewarded. He said, Allah has no limit to his treasure. So look at your father with a smiley face. As many times you look at your parents' face with the smile, you will get equal number of Hajj reward every time you have a smile on the face. And medically, scientifically speaking, it takes less muscle on the face to smile than the frown. There are more facial muscles engaged. So more energy is spent in frowning and aggravation with the physical changes, physiological changes in the body with the hormones changes. So anger and aggravation is not encouraged and approved in Islam. As we know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anger is from shaitan. So we know that the shaitan become overpowering a person when he is angry or upset. So whenever we have this feeling of aggravation or agitation or anger, we know that this time shaitan is trying to possess me. And the Nabi Wasallam said, in such situation, what should you do? If you are sitting, stand up. If you are standing, walk. If you are walking, go and make a wadu, change the scenery. When you change the scenery, emotion changes. When we are in the masjid, we are in a different scenery. When we go out, we are in a different emotional state of mind. So shaitan stops us from entering to the house of Allah. Biyutullahi fil ardi masajid. The houses of Allah on the earth are the masajid. And we have this understanding. Somehow we come in masjid rushing. We leave masjid rushing. We think the time is spent here is going to be wasted. Yet when we go to the other activities, social or business or bazaars and other places, the mall where we go, the movies we go, we always try to see the last scene of the movie. We always try to stay to the last person to be close the door of the mall. When you go there, they often are closing the door and people still are shopping. And this is not considered to be the one of the very pleasurable place for the deen. Not that it is forbidden. We should go to those places. Life is not restricted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Amr, Umr. Umrah means visitation or ziyarah. So, innama ya amr masajid Allah. Those, Allah says, shall be. The houses of Allah are the places we shall be. There is no option. It's not optional. It is absolute requirement as a fard on a believer. And what ajr we get for jama'a salah equal to 27 times the ajr of the sawab of the salah done alone. And what is the ajr? If you bring a person with you to the masjid, his 27 salat ajr will be rewarded, accounted in our account. So if you bring our children and our family to the masjid, we will get the reward of their salah even though they are younger children. And if we encourage somebody and market this program that masjid should be populated, for whatever reason we should come into sit here we should just come in to quietly find a place or place if you have gone into um, google search for this masjid there are about certain reviews are written this masjid in particular have rated as a five star most people who wrote the comment they feel very much peace and contentment when they come to this masjid this is your masjid this is the masjid of this community and we know that when the masjid was being started and building, everybody was excited and very emotional and charged to build the masjid. And we contributed to the best of our abilities. Some did more, some did less, and everybody in the community participated. But then shaitan comes in every masjid and it stop everybody. We know that Ibrahim and Ismail, when they were trying to build the masjid, they were being also disturbed and stopped. As we know, Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, when he immigrated to Medina al Munawwara, the first thing he did when he stayed in the place of Quba before entering the city of Medina al Munawwara, which was Yathrib, the old name of the place, when he stayed in Quba, he established the first Jum'ah as a Nabi sallallahu even though the salah were performed before that. So this is where the khutbah started and he established the masjid, the first masjid. And the ajr of making salah in Masjid Quba is equal to one umr. Two rakah salah nafil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have commanded us absolutely directly that we should not be exempted. It is absolutely a fard. Shell. The word is shell. 
should, shall means there's no option. This is not an optional situation. So when we get sick, we find easier, convenient reason not to come to the masjid. We get uh, displeased by some reason, either from the friend or brother or somebody who is in the masjid or who's active member of the masjid or who is the administration of the masjid or the imam of the masjid or people who are coming to the masjid. When we don't like them and we first attack us, we stop going to the masjid. But we have same situation at our work, with our friends, with our family, with our relatives, with our bosses. I think boss is one of the worst person in the world known in the today modern world because they dictate us to do something which we don't want to do. Actually bosses tell us to make your earning halal and we don't want to do it. So what we have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have blessed us with this masjid in this township at this very moment. If this masjid is empty in the day of judgment, this masjid is going to make a complaint to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As one of the hadith says that masjid will go to the Jannah along with its musalli, the people who come to pray. But when there are no musallis here, it is going to go with only one person or two person, either the imam or one person who stand behind them. So we should not see this as an optional thing, we should see it as a further thing. If today we get an option to go for Umrah or Hajj, we will given a free ticket to go. Everybody will be excited that I'm going to Umrah. So those visitations actually, again, sorry for my such blunt uh, thinking, I apologize in advance, but we think it's a vacation, we don't think it's a ibadah. If we thought it was an ibadah, then this was the place equally as respectable as that the other one. So this is not a vacation. This is an absolute necessity in the one aspect of the fara'id or the sharia of Islam. But other aspect is when we are distressed, when we are unhappy, when we are angered, when we are displeased. What we should do? We should come to the masjid and make the wudu and make salat al-hajat, salat al-tawbah. We should sit down here and do the zikr of Allah because we consult with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The consultation, contact. When we say Allahu Akbar, takbir taharima, everything is out and we are in one-on-one -on -one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the Islamic teaching. All the curtains are lifted when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen and our focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you make salah, make salah as if you are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith says, if you cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your salah, believe that he is watching over you. And this is the lower level of iman. So the, perf the purpose of faith, of any deen, is to come in contact with the God. People of different faith come in contact with their God, what they believe is their divine creator. But for Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, calls us Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al-falah. And we hear this word, Hayya ala al-falah, Hayya ala salah. Come to the salvation and come to the salah. And we ignore it as it was not for me, it was for another person. Because I have a better business to do than this. It means Allah is not Akbar. My job is Akbar. My needs are Akbar. My call of other things are Akbar. But not Allahu Akbar. Yet we take very big pride that Azan begins when the sun rises from the Pacific and as it comes to the Asian part and to the Middle Eastern part, to the European part, everywhere there are Adans are called. But how many of 1.6 billion Muslims show up to the Masajid in those moments? May Allah give us the ability to attend the Masjid and populate this Masjid for us. As we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's angel are witnessing the Musalli. They are assigned on the duties to come from the Fajr to Asr and Asr to the Fajr. And both of them are taking a record. Ya Allah, this person visit your home, your house for visitation. There should be a teaching and hadith and tafsir or other religious educational program. We are all grown up. But Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, nobody could be bigger Muslim and more honorable Muslim than him. Yet he would still listen to the recitation of Quran from the other Sahaba. The man who has the Qur'an revealed upon him. He is a sahib of Qur'an, yet he would come and listen to the sahaba and he would ask them to read Qur'an to me. And they used to say, Ya Rasulullah, you are the sahib of Qur'an, you want to listen from us? We are supposed to be listening from you. He said, no, I want to listen from you. 
Why Quran was written, subhanallah, because in uh, battle of uh, Yamama, 700 Hufaz got martyred. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu came to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, who was the Amir al -Mu'mini. He said, if this is the rate of martyrdom, all the Hufaz will be killed, and there will be nobody who would remember the Quran. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu at that moment said what? Umar, you are asking me to do a bid'ah? The word was bid'ah used in the history recorded, in the hadith it is recorded. Then Umar radiallahu ta'ala said, Ya Allah, open the heart of Abu Bakr the way you open my heart. And Abu Bakr said, Alhamdulillah, I understood this. And then he called Zaid radiallahu anhu, who was one of the young hafaz of the Quran, the best of the one of the best reciters. And he says, Zaid, I would we and Umar have decided this, and you should do the recording of the Quran. He says, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, you are asking me to do a bid'ah? Then Abu Bakr raised his hand to the heavens and said, Ya Allah, open his heart as you open our heart. And then Zayd understood it. And they did the assignment that Umar and Abu Bakr will stand at the door of the Masjid al Nabawi and Zayd will be sitting and every Sahabi who will come will be taking one witness with his ayah or surah. And he would read the surah and Zayd will confirm it because before entering, Umar and Abu Bakr will verify, you have a witness with you for this revelation that you heard from Rasulullah? And they would say, yes, this is how he is my witness of it. And then they will allow them to enter and quote this. When Huzaifa Yamani radiallahu anhu came, and he was only alone, and it was the last of the ayah of Surah Tawbah. You see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things in miraculous ways. He said, I don't have any witness, but I have the ayah. Omar and Abu Bakr said, we need a witness, we cannot take it. He said, don't you remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, your testimony is equal to two moments. Why? Because Rasulullah sallallahu was accused by a Jewish person that he sallallahu have stolen, actually he stole that saddle of Rasulullah and he would say, bring a witness, unless you bring a witness, I would not return it to you. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa asked the Sahaba, is there any witness of this transaction? Because it was done alone, nobody was a witness. So nobody would stand up, that they witness it. So then Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala anahu stood up. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I testify this is yours. So the settle was returned to Rasulullah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi asked him, Huzaifa, I know there was nobody beside me and him was doing the business transaction. How did you testify? He said, Ya Rasulullah, we believe Quran reveals on you every day. Jibreel visit to you every day. You say, La ilaha illallah, we believe in you. And you tell us about the Jannah and here, Akhra and Jahannam and all this we believe. How come we not believe that this is yours when you say it is yours? We testify shahada of la ilaha illallah based on the shahada of Muhammad Rasulullah. So this is how Islam teaches us. That what Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said and did in his own personal life when he was in the last day of his life, he was unable to stand up. Then Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and his uncle Abbas radiallahu anhu, they carried Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa on their arms with the sh one arm on one shoulder, the other arm on the other shoulder, and they dragged him like his feet were dragging on the ground, and they brought him and set him on the member. So this is how, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting behind when Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu led the salah in his own personal life. So the importance of salah with the jama'ah has enormous rewards. And our children, when they witness us that we are busy working, which we are busy working, and Islam does not stop us from working. But they see that if the father is a hardworking man and father is already caring and doing his best and coming late at night, going early in the morning, does not, they don't see father playing with them. They understand that father is a very hardworking man. They respect father for that. But when the fathers stand up in the fajr and pray with them or take them into the masjid, then they understand that this is also a valuable thing. This importance comes when we start coming to the masajid. And we have plenty of time to watch late news and late dramas and sleep late and entertain ourselves and other things. But look like religion is becoming the way we used to think about the Western people have a faith understanding. It's a private matter. It is an individual issue, and it is not to be invited for. We know that the churches in America are on wholesale, underpriced. When 100 years ago, when these churches were built by those forefathers of this nation, these people were motivated. They wanted to have a house of worship. And today we see that every U.S.-born citizen, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, 
they all take regular vacation for entertainment because they work hard, which is everybody's right to travel and vacation. But they do not see the non-Muslims. Their churches are empty. That is why they are on sale because they can't afford it. But if we are the only thing who think that we are proud and we don't bring our children to the masajid, then children will also see that the job and vacations are two priority of life and entertainment is a third priority, but the masajid are optional things. Well, the Quran says it is absolute fard for masjid to be populated by believers. We can have disagreement, we can have disengagement, we can have dislike, nobody is equal. Five fingers, none of equal, but make a hand and a fist, which is a strong. And this is why we are going to be broken by shaitan. The one who leaves the group, get broken. This is what it says. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al nur verse number 36, Fi biyuti adhin Allahu antur fa' Wa yuzkara fiha smahu yusabbihu lahu fiha bil ghudu wal asal in houses which Allah had allowed to be exalted and that his name shall be remembered, therein do offer praises of him at morning and evening. So we should remember that this is one of the important aspect and part of a Muslim believer. If someone take over when the Barbary Masjid in India was demolished, people were very upset, Muslims were very upset all over the world that our Masjid is demolished, yet it was not used for Salah for centuries. There were not many worshippers. And Muslims are still fighting case in that land because they think legally it just belongs to them. The property is owned by Muslims. Yet Hindu believe that they are wrong there. One of the gods was born there, which is a political issue. So, so we get very much humiliated if somebody comes in, but we do not come in. And we stop people from coming in. And we do not need anybody to stop us. We just do not like the Imam's speech today, so I'm not going there again. See, this is shaitan. Imam is there at the moment. He's going to be never coming again, or he may not live another breath. But houses of Allah are for the worship. We know in Masjid al Nabawi, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, and Abdullah ibn Umar, and uh, Abdurrahman bin Abu Bakr used to sit in Masjid al Nabawi. And Marwan bin Hakam was doing the khutbah in the member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he would insult and use foul language and insulting words in the respect of all those Khulfai Rashidun. And their son would be sitting there and listening to it, yet still they stand the salah. We should understand that when Ima, uh, Ali radiallahu anhu and Ma'awiyah radiallahu anhu, they had a conflict. When the matter of fiqh came into Ma'awiyah radiallahu anhu and he did not know how to resolve this conflict, he asked fatwa from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. So personal dislike and disagreement, even the fighting, they had a battlefield where 40,000 Muslims died. Yet they were still respectful for the each other's faith. And this is an important aspect. The message is masjid shall not be abandoned. We should accommodate. And one of the things which we all have understanding, we are very intelligent, highly educated people sitting here. We know that when we go home, the rule is wife want to go to some place, so we go there. The rule is mom and the kids want to be in certain place. Dad has to just surrender his decision. If there are two visits, one is to the masjid for the lecture of Islam, and another is a party for the community get together, you know where we go. We need to understand and realize that we as a community should not arrange programs in the moment when the masajid are busy or are invited to. We should also bring other people to come here and spend time just because this thing, property of millions of dollars is going to be just fill on Jummah or Eidan. In Eid, we don't have a place to park and we have to have a violation of the township and whatnot. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَىٰ وَآتُ الزَّكَىٰ وَمَا تُقَدِّمُ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْنِ تَجِدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ So establish Salah. Establishing Salah does not mean make a masjid and stay in home and make Salah. Means come to the masjid and perform the Salah. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَىٰ Iqama is the establishment of Salah. It is regularly to be done. If not this masjid, wherever we find a masjid, if it's an option to be in the masjid, make sure we should make salah in the masjid. For barakah, sometimes we can make in the home. Nawafil should be done in home for the barakah. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam used to perform fard in the masjid and nawafil in the home. And we perform fard in the home and nawafil here. 
Again, some brother may take it. I'm also part of believing in that group, not that it is a problem. We want to be gathering on the Muharram. We want to be gathering on the Rabiul Awal. We want the gathering on the Nisr Shaban. We want all the gatherings where we will come in a speech and fiery speaker will come and emotional will be, emotional will be high and takabir will be going on, takbir Allahu Akbar. And all that after midnight, the Fajr Salah is missed. Now the nafil is important or the fard is important. We were in the masjid for the nafil. The fard time came and we were absent. How the malaika is going to write absent from the masjid? So we have this, whatever you will send for, for your own self, in the khair, you will find with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, multiplied with multiple times, from the ajr, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives as he pleases. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. So do not think that only angels inform Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah indeed is watching whatever we are doing. So we have an important message for us. The Importance we should understand when Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, when he sent one of the companions, Abu Wahab radiallahu anhu to China. In those days, China was an impossible place to visit. He gave him the nasihah, he gave him the advice, which was that whenever when you go there, establish a masjid. Establish a masjid where Muslim will Wherever you are, Allah will gather you. So we have a place of gathering. If we are those who are Allah talking about, if we are not those Allah is talking about, then we are not to be gathered. Then we will not gather if we are not. Every nation have a direction where they turn. Where they turn their faces to. So you should do, excel, compete, and run in doing the khair. Khairat, not in Urdu khairat of charity. It is the khair of the doing of the righteous goodness. Wherever you are, Allah will bring you. So if we are not one of those Allah is talking about, then we will not come there. So we should be very mindful that. So when this companion went, and Nabi alayhi salatu was salam said, whoever person makes masjid as his house, the house of Allah as his house for the act of worship, Allah is becoming, a, becomes the guarantor of this person for the dunya and the worldly life and the hereafter and the akhir. And he becomes so much so, zamin, damin, bil arabi, damin. Allah become his guarantor. Even to the sarat, the sarat, nobody, even Rasulullah will not be able to help that moment. A person have to do the salat. Allah is taking a personal guarantee of a person who treat masjid as the house of Allah, as his own house to come to worship. Not for the shararat and fitna. No shar, only for the khayr. So we should be very careful that. When Abu Zarqafari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he was about to die, he was, he invited, he called his son to come together. And he said, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam have said, make masjid and Treat masjid, think of masjid as your own house. You will get peace, contentment, and Allah will pass you from the sarat without any hardship. These are the three guarantees of people who are in the masjid, treating masjid as their own home, as respect as the house of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala ahma. He narrated, whoever, man rafa masjid, rafa Allah. Who respect and honor masjid, have respected and honored Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who love and feel affectionate towards the masjid, or develop this thing for himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala develop love, hub, and ulfa, affection towards this person. When Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam came to Masjid al-Nabawi, he found that that land belonged to two orphans. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, his own money he used to buy the land. And then Sahaba, also companion, along with Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, carried the bricks and the rocks to build the Masjid al-Nabawi. Ammar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ammar bin Yasir radiallahu anhu. He was young, very energetic, freed slave. He was carrying two rocks and all that. And it was very hot weather. And he fainted. People thought he died. 
Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam came to him. He said, Amar, wake up. You're not going to die. You'll be killed by the rebellious group. And that happened in battle of Sifin. So we know that Nabi sallallahu alayhi predicted something so far before that, which happened in somewhere in 30, uh, 35 Hijra year. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi told him in the second year of Hijra. So Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam foretold. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam, when they were raising the wall of Kaaba, وَإِذْ يَرْفَعَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْقَوَائِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ تُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ رَبَّنَا وَبَعْثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَطْلُوَ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَنْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَ نَفْسَهُ وَلَقَدْ اسْتَفَيْنَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ so we know that our forefather Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam and our beloved messenger Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have taught us love and populate and establish the masajid. We should bring our families. This is one of the few masajids which has a big space for the women. And the women who have come here, they have written the reviews of this masjid, that they're very happy with this masjid. Bathrooms are clean, property is very neat, and the space is enough for the women. So try to bring our families as much as we can, and may Allah give us the ability and the strength to do that. One more reminder that during the Ramadan and during the Eidain, we had uh, made the fundraising uh, in this masjid. And I was the one who did it. And as you brothers have written whatever you pledge, kindly fulfill your pledge. This is a promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you cannot do it for whatever reason, let the administration know that you cannot afford it. But do not hold it. If you can and you have promised, fulfill the promise. Jazakumullah.